Hello, this is the solution video for the challenge group by. So our prompt asks us to create a function group by that accepts an array and a callback and returns an object. Group by will iterate through the array and perform the callback on each element. Each return value from the callback will be saved as a key on the object, and the value associated with each key will be an array consisting of all the elements that resulted in that return value when passed into the callback. So let's go ahead and jump into pseudocode so that we can map out our strategy more clearly. So first thing we need to do is we need to create a function group by. And it's really important for us to always note our inputs and outputs. So let's go ahead and start with that. For input, we know that this function is taking in an array and a callback. And for the output, we know that this function is going to return an object. All right. So first thing that we need to do is we need to iterate through our input array. And in this iteration, basically what we want to do is we want to handle our object. While we're iterating through the array, we want to add the right key value pairs into our object. Into our object. All right, so before we move forward, let's clarify what those key value pairs are going to be. So for our key, we know that each key is going to be each result of passing in the elements into the callback and the associated value is going to be an array of all the elements elements that resulted in that key. Okay. So before we can even add all these key value pairs or properties, there are a couple of things that we need to take into consideration when dealing with our object. It's probably wise to first assess do these properties exist in the object or do they not? So let's set up some conditionals to deal with that, right? So the first thing is we need to check if the property doesn't exist in the object, then we definitely want to add the key value pairs into the object. Otherwise, else, if the property does actually exist already in the object, then what we want to do is we want to access the value of that particular key, right? And when we access the value, which we know is going to be an array of elements, we then want to add the current element into the existing value array, right? All right, so after we've done that, the next thing that we have to do is we're going to exit out of our for loop or whatever iteration, whatever loop we choose to use to iterate through the array. And when we exit out of it, we want to return something. And in this case, we want to return the object that we created and populated. All right, so I think this looks good. Let's go ahead and start coding this out. So for this solution, I will be using an arrow function. So let's say const group by, and we know that we are taking in two parameters, an array and a callback, right? Here goes our fat arrow, and I will just be closing out this function all the way at the bottom. All right, here we go with our semicolon. Don't forget those semicolons to end your statements. All right, so 
Again, we want to return an object, but first we probably have to declare a variable to hold the object. So we're saying const object, all right, and we're initializing that to an empty object to begin with. The next thing that we want to do is we want to iterate through the array. And in this case, I think we can just use a regular a basic for loop so that we can really see what's going on under the hood. So for let, we're going to initialize i to 0. All right, and we're going to run the loop while i is less than array length. And then we're going to increment i by 1 with each iteration of the, of the loop, okay? All right, close that out down here. Okay, so again, in this for loop, we want to add these key value pairs into our, pro our object. Um, again, our key is going to be each result of passing in the elements into the callback. So in order to make things a little bit easier to keep track of, why don't we store this result, right, into its own variable, okay? So let's say, let callback result. This way, it's more declarative and more clear what we're dealing with. So the callback result is basically taking our callback and we're going to pass in our current element, which is array at index i, okay? And now that I'm thinking about it, let's make this into its own variable as well, this current element. So that way, again, we're just making things a little bit easier and clearer for us. So let's use let current element. And we're using let because we know that this variable is going to change values at every iteration, right? So we're using let so that we can reassign it. Okay, so our current element is going to be array at index i. Okay, so because we've changed this and stored it into current element, let's go ahead and change that here as well. So now we're passing in our current element into our callback, which will yield our callback result. All right, and there you go. Hopefully this will make it easier to keep track of as we move along. All right, so now that we've done that, let's move on into our conditional. Again, the first thing that we want to do is we want to see if these properties already exist in the object, right? If it's so, first thing, let's create a conditional for if it doesn't exist. So if our object does not have the property of this callback result, and again, this callback result, we want to store as key. And if this does not exist, and to check if it doesn't, we need to add a bang operator. All right. So this conditional right here is checking if this statement is truthy. So if this object does not have the callback result, then we're going to have to add it. So in our object, we're going to add our callback result as key, and then its value is going to be an array, right? So let's add the square brackets for the array, and we're going to hold all the elements, right, that resulted in that key. So in this case, with every iteration, we're dealing with a current element. And so right here, you can see we have our array holding the current element that when we passed it into the callback resulted in this key right here. Okay, so the other scenario is if that property already does exist. So in that case, let's go ahead and add that in. Okay, close out. All right, so if that property does exist, then we want to access the value all right, and we do that by calling our object. And to access the value, we just, in square brackets, add in the key whose value we want to access. So callback result. So right here, we're accessing the value, which 
In this case, this particular value we know is going to be an array of elements, right? It's basically this array that we first initialized right here. So this array is what we're accessing here. And because it's an array, we can use a certain method to add the current element into this array. In this case, I think push the push method would do a great job. So let's push in our current element into this value of a, an array that already exists, that we already previously initialized. All right, so now that we've done that, I think we're all set. And all, the last thing that we need to do is just to return our object, okay? Now, before we run our code, let's understand what's going on down here. Let's uncomment these lines and see what's going on. So first, we have a variable decimals, which is basically an array of decimals. And then we also have our function floored, which looks to me like it's taking in a number, in this case, one of these decimals, and basically rounding it down to an absolute number. So we get rid of those decimals, right? The last thing is we're console logging the invocation of the group by function that we just created, and we're passing in two arguments, the decimals array and the floored function as our callback. And all right, let's see if this will give us our expected result. And just to remind you right here, it says that it should log this, which is basically an object and the keys that you see here are basically the results of passing in these decimals into our callback, right? So we have one and two as our keys. And then as our values, we have these arrays with the decimals that we passed into our callback that resulted into the corresponding keys that you see right here. All right, so let's go ahead and run this. And voila, there you go. We have an object with the appropriate key value pairs. And that is it.